This is a great session because it's all about gadgets. You know, of all the things we've ever done at Omni Update, and all the things that we did in version 10, by far the coolest thing we've ever done is introduce gadgets. I think I can speak for everyone at Omni Update and say this is probably the most powerful introduction of capabilities that we've ever brought into the product. And it's one that will last for a long, long time because it truly opens up possibilities that we can't even dream about today. We are really excited about gadgets, and we want to spend from now until lunch just talking about that. So in version 10, for the very first time, we opened the door just a little bit with APIs and this whole new thing called a gadget framework. When we designed version 10, we had three key tenets that we wanted to stick with. To remind you what those are, the first was to dramatically improve usability without changing the user experience. We had so much positive feedback from all of you throughout all of these years that we certainly wanted to improve the product but not change it so much that the user experience was any different. And I think we achieved that in version 10. The second thing we wanted to do was to make it as fast and as responsive to the touch as a desktop application. And because of HTML5 and some of the more modern technologies that we could use for the first time in version 10, we think we did that as well. And the third thing that we wanted to do was to create an open-ended platform for the entire OmniUpdate community to build upon. And this, by far, was the most ambitious thing of all. But we think we did that. And gadgets are really the key to having this possible. So to remind you how we built version 10 and why we could even do this, at the very base, at the very foundation, is the data storage layer. Now, this isn't the most sexy part of the product, but it's actually the thing that gives us the most speed and performance for very large sites, very large files, and very large activities like site-wide publishing, which happens so quickly. So this is where we combined a database, traditional database, along with the file store of all of the files, those millions of pages and content chunks that are being edited, and merged those together into our fusion storage technology that we designed for this purpose. On top of that is the application layer. And the application layer is where all the work happens. This is where the content transformation happens. This is where publishing happens, workflow, dependency manager, all those things that process in the system. The application layer provides all the technologies that we needed, frankly, to build upon for the application, and gadgets, and more. So then right on top of that is the user interface layer. And this is because of HTML5, where it got really interesting for version 10, and where two years ago, when we first talked about how we were going to do all these amazing things in version 10, make it like a desktop application, make it really responsive, this is why we could do that. So this is where you get drag and drop, drag from the desktop. We use WebSockets, SVG. We use all these modern technologies and we really took a huge leap forward from version 9 to version 10 because of that. But if you think about it, the APIs is really the glue that connects the user interface layer to the application layer. And anything is possible if you consider that the entire system is a giant API. So that's how we thought about the process of building version 10. And that's exactly what we did. We built version 10 as an application that simply accessed the API to get everything else that we wanted. Well, guess what? Gadgets can do that too. Other applications that you might build, modules, all of these things that we're talking about are afforded because of this separation between the user interface layer and the application layer, and most notably, because of the API. So these were the three tenants, but 
the one that really will carry us into the future in a big, big way is the last one. We want to create this open-ended platform for the entire Omni Update community to build upon. We want you to imagine your own future. We want you to be able to participate in a bigger way. Of course, I'm not talking about open source software. I'm talking about a controlled environment that's safe, that we curate, but is open completely for you to expand upon. And that's what's so cool about gadgets. We knew we couldn't possibly think of everything, so frankly, we opened it up to you to help out. The application programming layer, the API itself, allows access to any OU campus function. It allows you to connect to any third-party system and vice versa, and to ultimately extend the platform in a really significant way. So we want everybody, including us, we challenge ourselves with this every day, we want everyone to dream big. If we think about the platform for a moment and what we've developed in version 10, think about it this way. At the very center, at the very core, is things like the content authoring and storage. But there's much more than that. There's content workflow and versioning. Very powerful versioning system in OU campus. You only see it when you use the CMS layer that we've built. But it's incredibly powerful in what it can do, and it's accessible from anything. Content transformation and publishing. We built one of the most powerful transformation engines of any application we've ever seen. You can convert virtually anything to anything else. And that's how we create web pages, which is a simple one, out of the OU Campus system, by transforming through XSL into virtually any other data type. You've got things like login control. Maybe this is a little bit simple, but it's an incredible challenge for many of you on campus because of the myriad of different systems that you're using and how you ultimately control content. We've got things like the live delivery platform, LDP. We've got things like user management. Again, maybe a part of the complexities of your world when you've got so many different users and so many different systems. And we've got all kinds of different assets that are manageable throughout the system, certainly not just web pages. So if you think about this at the core, and there's much, much more. I'm just touching the tip of the iceberg here. All of these things are accessible through the API, meaning the clients that can be created, or the applications, let's call them, things like the CMS. This is OU Campus. This is what we're talking about. But there's much more that can be done. You've got applications of all types on campus that are challenging and perhaps maybe not necessarily as connected as they could be to all of these functions and this power and these user managements and, and uh, transformations that you could do with these other applications. And this is also just the tip of the iceberg. Think about marketing automation for a minute. Think about what I showed you with the email campaign manager a moment ago. And think about how the APIs tie all that together. Well, that's also just the tip of the iceberg, because there's so much going on in the, term of, in the terms of, of marketing automation and the digital marketing management problems that you're trying to solve every day. So whether they're behemoth applications that could be created that use the API that access the platform, or simple, smaller gadgets that get a lot of work done right in the user interface layer that they're already using, anything is possible. And that's why we can dream so big because of OU Campus. So gadgets, let's cut to the chase. These can access any OU Campus function. They can connect to any third-party system outside of the system as well. And then they can act as a conduit between the two, and thereby extending the existing functionality way beyond what it is we conceived of 
maybe what you've conceived of so far. So this is why gadgets can carry us so far into the future. And they're so simple, and they're so easy to write, and they're so easy to use, and they're so easy to train, and they fit so naturally into the product. So we're effectively trying to build this gadget ecosystem by allowing participation from a broader audience. And you know that audience includes us, OmniUpdate developers, certainly. We're huge proponents of this. And you've seen a dozen gadgets materialize over the last 12 months in version 10. And we're not done there. We've got so many gadgets of our own that we know you're going to be interested in that we're just going to keep writing them and pumping them out. But we also know that you've got some amazing ideas and that our customers can participate in this ecosystem as well. You can build your own gadgets for your own specific purpose. Be as selfish as you want. Don't share them with anybody. Or you can write something that's actually usable by a broader audience as well. So there's all different ways to think about how you can participate and the value you can get from gadgets. And then in addition to that, the OmniUpdate partners who we work with, who we love, who do such amazing work, have a tremendous amount of skills in the development world. So as they add functionality that tie into expertise of their own, this adds value to you and to all of our future customers as well. So we're really excited to include our partners in the whole gadget ecosystem. To date, we have 15 public gadgets available, five of which were just introduced last week. So let's talk about types of gadgets. Well, there are content editing gadgets, gadgets that frankly help end users more easily or add functionality to the editing process. For instance, simple one, URL shortener. You don't have to go out to a third party system to do a URL shortener. You can directly in the system click a button, generate that, it drops it right into where you're editing on the page already. So you don't have to drop in an existing link or go up to a, uh, an outside service to get a short link. Another great one is the images gadget, simply called. But the functionality is incredible because it allows you to create groups of images, select them, and then drag and drop these images directly onto a page without having to figure out what they're called or, or how to insert an image. You just see that image and you drag it right onto the page. So you can create these, these curated groups of images that are necessary for your end users and available to them directly while they're editing these pages. There are gadgets that are designed just for common tasks, to make common everyday tasks easier. For example, here in the dashboard, we've got a gadget called My Checked Out Content. Again, simply, simply called, but a very common task. I don't have to hunt it down. I don't have to remember what menu it's in or where to get it. It's right there in my dashboard, things that I'm working on all the time. Here's one for my inbox, things I'm working on all the time. And these gadgets can be moved around and customized to each end user's liking. There are gadgets specifically designed for administrators and administration of the tool. So a perfect example of that, I showed you this morning, the analytics gadget for site-wide analytics by an administrator. Then there are gadgets that connect and extend the platform. So these are ones that do actually go out there and do something outside of the platform, pull in data, or communicate back and forth with some third party system. A good example of that is the brand new YouTube gadget. This is a, a perfect example of how bringing in content from an outside system through its own APIs directly into a gadget that's right there available to end users so they can drag YouTube videos, perhaps in a set that you've set for them, and pull them right, drop them right onto a page. And then 
gadgets are context aware by design. So depending upon how you utilize this capability, you can make these gadgets appear and disappear and frankly transform their behavior based upon what the users are doing. And this is all a part of the design of the gadget system. So for example, right here on the sidebar, you can see they, these gadgets might change completely depending upon whether a person is editing a page or simply previewing a page. All right, there are dashboard gadgets and there are sidebar gadgets. You've seen a little bit of both of these. Let me explain. So dashboard gadgets live right here in the main dashboard. If a user logs in without editing a page, this is where they'll always be. So you can turn on and off gadgets directly in this and drag them around on the screen to reorder them. That's one type of gadget and where they live. And the configure button here allows users to go in and customize this and turn on and off the gadgets that you've given them access to. Here's an example of Google Analytics directly in a dashboard gadget. Then there are sidebar gadgets. Now sidebar gadgets live right here on the right hand side of the page and this page comes and goes responsively depending upon how wide the page is. You can open it up and you can close it if you want more editing room. The editor resizes naturally as you do so. It gets out of the way when you don't want it there, but it's always available to you with just the right tool at just the right magical moment when you need it, should you want it. So here are some of the gadgets in the sidebar gadgets while a person is editing in the WYSIWYG editor, in this case in the Just Edit editor. So right now there are 15 gadgets in the system and to configure those, you go into a screen that looks like this. You can see all of the gadgets listed here and you can see the type of gadget. In this case, they're all of gadget type OU, meaning they were all gadgets that we created for you. Now, if you have a gadget that you want to add, you simply click this new button up here in the top right corner, and then you can add your own gadget, and it would only be available to you and your users, and it would show up with a different icon. So it wouldn't be an OU gadget, it would be one of your own. Here's where you can see who has access to the gadgets. Now, you can, you can be very selfish here and, and disallow most people from having the gadgets, or you can open them up and then you can determine whether or not they, by configuration, whether or not they can be used in certain aspects in certain ways. But you can set users by group, access by group, so that all of your users that you want to have access to these gadgets can. And you can set up very restrictive groups, or in this case, use the everyone group, which is one of the default groups, so everyone can see the gadgets. And then the location at which the gadget could be. Could it be in the sidebar or the dashboard or both? Some of these gadgets were designed to work in both. And when you design your gadgets, you can decide that as well. Now, when I click on one of these gadgets as an administrator, I can decide who has access to it by setting up a group for them to use. If they're a member of that group, then they have access to it. But I can also decide whether it's always on, meaning they can't turn it off. I'm gonna train them to use this gadget. I wanna make sure they know it's there, so I'm not gonna let them turn it off and then ask me later why they don't have the gadget. Or it can be default on, meaning the next time they log in, because you set it up for them to use, there it is. But they can turn it off if they don't want it. Or you can default it off such that they actually have to turn it on if they wanna see it. So you've got this control as administrators to make sure that uh, the right gadget is available to the right person. And then as a person, as a user or an administrator, frankly, you simply click to add or remove the gadgets. In this case, I'm looking at the configuration screen for the dashboard. When I'm logged into the system, I click here and I can start adding and removing the gadgets that are available to me through this interface. And here as well, for the sidebar gadget, I can simply go in here and decide I want these turned on or off very, very easily. 
And again, through the new OU marketplace that I showed you this morning, you'll be able to simply go in globally and decide what gadgets you want and uh, very quickly and easily set them up here as well. Then you can simply drag and drop any gadget to anywhere on the screen that makes sense for that gadget. So here I am in the dashboard, and if I click and drag and drop, I've just moved these little gadgets around. Super simple, super natural. Again, because of HTML5, because of all of the design considerations that went into version 10, we did all this hard work for you. So when you write your gadgets, stuff like this just works. And the same is true, of course, in the sidebar. So gadgets help you unlock the potential of OU Campus in a really big way. But it goes even further because it allows you to unlock potential that's frankly beyond the scope of OU Campus. We have five new gadgets in release 10.2 that came out last week. You might not have seen all these gadgets yet, so let me show you. The first is Workflow. The new Workflow gadget is really remarkable. Here's what it looks like in the dashboard. And I can simply uh, drag this to where I want it to be in the dashboard and make it useful to myself. And I can simply click to approve, and I can see the threaded message from the person who sent it off for approval and take action on it right here. So much faster, much simpler than ever before, because right while I'm in my dashboard, I can take care of business. It's really cool. Here's what it looks like in the sidebar, because this is a gadget that works in both the dashboard and the sidebar. So the same story here. I can simply click and see the message, see the thread, and take action. The workflow gadget sounds so simple, but it's so powerful, and it makes life so much easier for power users. The second is what we call page parameters. And here's what it looks like in the dashboard. I'm sorry, in the sidebar. So page parameters does something really remarkable. If you think about what page properties you use, for instance, in HTML, and some of these very deeply nested elements on a page that end users might not be that familiar with, why well, have to drop into the source editor? Maybe you don't even allow them to do so. But why have to go so far as going into the the um, properties and page parameters and, and drill down through the configuration of that page, which you can do when we can make it available right here in the sidebar. So in this wonderful sidebar gadget, anything I change that I've been given access to change is directly affecting the page properties that would be completely hidden to the WYSIWYG editor. So for example, here I am nested down into the parameters, page parameters section going through the, um, the properties of the page. So to get to this point, I would have had to have exited the WYSIWYG editor. I would have had to have clicked on, page prop on the properties tab at the top of the page, and then drill down into the page parameters to get to this level. Well, I can do the same thing, and whatever I change in one will change directly in the other as well. So imagine, if you will, some of the things that are not as simple as a title tag or a description. Imagine configuration parameters that change the behavior of the template, that add two columns to a page instead of one or three, and allow you to turn on and off different functionality on that page. Maybe the display of a calendar of, or of a social media banner or something else that you might turn on and off by deeply going down into the page parameters, now you can do so right in the gadget. And it affects the display in the preview mode of that page in real time. It's really cool. The third is something called link check. Now, link check. Why do we need a link check gadget? Well, of course, the system prevents you from creating broken links at every right and left turn. but you can still end up with broken links on a page. Maybe they're external links. Maybe there's something that you've 
edited through the WYSIWYG editor that a mistaken person typed in and created this link that doesn't actually exist. Well, you don't want broken links on a page, and sometimes they're actually hard to find. You go into the final check, and it says you got these broken links, and it tells you how many there are and maybe where sort of they are on the page. Well, this shows you immediately where they are on the page. If you can see here, down here at the bottom, so I know that's kind of low on the screen there, but it's actually highlighting where that broken link is on the page in real time as you're editing this page. Now, you can go and click the button, and it'll scan the page and look for broken links, tell you how many there are, give you a little report, and highlight them all on the page at once. But while you're in the WYSIWYG editor, you can then go and fix them. So there's no hunting down and trying to figure out where that is. And is it in the page? Is it in the backend XSL template? Where is it? You can just see it right here. It's really, really cool. Fourth is something called request help. This is also a really cool gadget. This one was uh, inspired by you all. And this is one that does something pretty remarkable. You probably get help tickets all the time from your end users saying, hey, I can't figure out you know, how to publish this page or how to do X, Y, Z on this page. And then you have to go through this whole detective investigation to figure out, well, who is this person and, and what are they doing and what browser are they using and, and you know, what time of day was that they said it, all of these things. Well, now, through this gadget, by requesting help, a user can simply fire off a message to you as administrators and give them all those details. Pretty cool. Pretty simple. And finally, the fifth gadget is the new YouTube gadget. Pretty self-explanatory, but pretty powerful in what it does because you can authorize a particular YouTube channel to be used by particular users who then have access to drag and drop the YouTube video thumbnails directly onto the page. They can even play them directly from the thumbnail before they drag it onto the page. And if you want, you can give them permission to search all of YouTube and find other videos. So it might be a, a fun way to uh, allow people to add some videos as well. You've got a lot of control on this one. Who gets it? What kind of power they have? But it's really easy to add YouTube videos to a page and not screw it up. So the five new gadgets, workflow, page parameters, link check, request help, and finally, the new YouTube gadget. How about if we take a look at these right now? I'll call Shahab up here, and we'll give you a quick demo. Shahab? As you can see, we're really excited about gadgets. So I'm going to jump straight into OU Campus, and I'm going to show you how these gadgets work. I'm actually going to use a gadget to get to the page that I want. Um, and here I'm on a page. I've got a couple links on there. Let's say I'm actually in here editing using Just Edit. And I realize, you know, I'm not sure about the links. So I'm going to pull out that link check gadget. And now, this was actually inspired by our uh, gadget contest in 2014 as well. And so I'm just going to run that link check gadget. It's going to go through. It's going to find any broken links. And it's going to highlight them right there in my editable region. And so you can see I've got these highlighted. If I hover over, you know, maybe I have several and I want to know exactly where it is, I can hover over it. It'll highlight the specific link that I want to focus on. I can actually click on it. It'll give me more information about what's wrong with that link. So it'll tell me what the text is, what the link is, what it's pointing to, um, and the HTTP, excuse me, HTTP status code as well. Um, additionally, I can actually click this little email icon and send a report to somebody else in OU campus. So maybe I don't have permission. Maybe the, the link is somewhere in the template, and I don't have permission to make those changes on the page. Well, I can just choose my administrator and send a report, type in a small message. The report will include all of the broken links, uh, their text, as well as the URLs. And it'll send it off to the particular user that I choose. Um, if I'm making changes, I can jump in here, make a bunch of changes. I can just hit this refresh button to run the link check again and update the results. So that's the link check gadget. I'm going to go ahead and turn the highlight off. The request help gadget, um, 
again, inspired by the gadget contest. We really love hearing these ideas from you. Uh, as an administrator, I can choose which group of users receives a notification when a user requests help. So right now, we have it set to all administrators, which I'm actually a part of. So I'm just going to go ahead and type a, sm a small message here. And I'm going to hit send. Now, normally for the end user, they wouldn't see a, a message back right away uh, because they're not often going to be in the group of users that gets access to that. Um, but because I'm an administrator, I have access to that. And I should see in my inbox that Shahab Lashkari requested help. Now, in addition to the message that the user supplied, we're putting all of the relevant information that the OU campus administrator needs. So you're going to get a link directly to the location that they are in OU campus. So whether they're editing, previewing, you know, on a report somewhere, we're going to tell you what that is. We're going to give you their username, their full name, what user level they are, what operating system they're running, which browser, and the exact time that this happened. So all of the relevant information, and you get to choose who it goes to uh, using group access. So really cool idea. Uh, you know, we, read, we read this, and we thought, this is just obvious. I mean, this is such a great idea. We need to do this. OK, so back to content. The workflow gadget, um, as Lance mentioned, lets us see all of our workflow items. I'm going to jump right in here. And you can see the, the thread, the information that's going back and forth. You can type right in here and say whatever you need back. So type directly in here and hit send. And that goes through. Just like you know, a regular chat conversation, that information gets stored with the workflow transaction. So each workflow transaction has its own thread of messages. Uh, and if you have, let's say, a chain of workflow, I send it off to somebody, and that person sends it off to another person, then I'll actually be able to choose down here um, from all the people involved in the workflow transaction who I want to send the message off to. Uh, and I'll be able to see all of those messages directly from within this gadget. So really just a, a simple, quick way to get direct access to all of your workflow items, as well as all of the messaging and the history associated with a particular workflow transaction. OK. Um, now we have page parameters. You know, page parameters are really, really, really powerful. And they, we've seen our customers do really amazing things with page parameters. We've gotten to a point where we've seen schools that have you know, over 40 or close to 100 page parameters that go through. And they have one template and all of these different page parameters that can completely change the way that template looks. And we thought, well, if you have to keep jumping out of your page preview, you're not really going to see what effect your uh, changes are going to have. So we've built the page parameters gadget. Um, I can show you if I jump in here. You know, I've got my page preview here. I'm going to actually turn on a right column. Uh, and it's going to have quick links in there. So I'll just go ahead and save that. And it's going to reload the preview. And you're going to see that it's got now a right column that has quick links. The important thing about this, as I mentioned, we have some schools that you know, have tons and tons of page parameters. Well, we don't want to clutter up this gadget with information that's maybe not necessary. So what we've done is, in addition to creating this gadget, we've introduced a new attribute for page parameters. And that's called exclude-gadget. So if you want a page parameter to not show up in the gadget, all you have to do is add that one parameter, exclude dash gadget equals yes, and that will now be excluded from the gadget. So you can really clean out uh, the sidebar gadget to only the stuff that you feel is relevant. You know, by default, we also have this section at the top that has the title, the description, all the metadata associated with it. And there's actually a setting uh, at the gadget level to disable that as well. So maybe you just want to have things that are going to visually be reflected in the preview, not necessarily metadata. You have that full control using this gadget. And now I'll jump straight back into the editor here. And I'm going to pull up the YouTube gadget. Now, I've already authorized a YouTube channel. 
Uh, it's very similar to authorizing a Facebook account, uh, I'm sorry, a Facebook page, a Twitter account, or a Google Analytics view. Um, so you'll do that under setup, and then you choose which group of users has access to that particular channel. And if you have multiple channels available to you, you'll be able to switch by selecting from here. Um, by default, you'll see all of your video uploads. So here's a video that is, has been uploaded to my channel. I can click on it. I can see the preview. I can play it from here. I can see my description. I can hit insert to insert it wherever my cursor is. Or I can just drag it directly to where I want it to go. So maybe I want it right up here at the beginning. It'll pop up for the information needed. I can actually change the dimensions if I wanted to, make it smaller or bigger, and hit OK. But once you hit Save, you'll actually see the preview with the video, um, and that's been brought in. Now, the gadget also allows me to choose from videos that are favorited in my channel, any videos from my playlists. So if I've created playlists, I can choose that and choose videos from my playlists. And there's even a setting that allows me to search all of YouTube. So maybe I want to give my users the ability to just do a complete YouTube search and find a, a video and drag that in. Maybe it's not something that's on my channel. Maybe you don't want your users to be able to do that. So there's a setting in the gadget that can turn off the full YouTube search if you don't want that. Um, but I can come straight into here, type in a search term, and it's going to find videos all across YouTube um, instantly that I can just drop right onto my page. So really powerful, really easy to use, um, something we're really proud of with all of these new gadgets. And that's all I have to show. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Shab. All right. So now it's your turn. So we are challenging all of you to write some incredible gadgets. And we're going to try to help make that happen. First of all, at the conference here, hopefully, a lot of you are signed up for the gadget workshops. And these are where we're going to help you write gadgets right here at the conference. We also have been uh, actively trying to encourage you through a variety of different means, including the 2014 Gadget Challenge, which produced so many wonderful ideas and gadgets from all of you. We were really excited to kick this off last year. And we were really pleased to see the amount of participation. Here's how it worked. There were two different ways that you could participate. You could simply come up with an idea for a gadget. Or you could actually build a working gadget. And you did both. And it was pretty cool. We had 22 gadget entries. We had 18 individuals write gadgets and submit them. And we had 373 votes from all of you as to who the winners were. So this was our, just our, our, our first attempt at doing this. And we were pleased already that we had just launched gadgets in the product, and we just got some of your participation. But we hope to get even more. The good news is we had two winners, one in each category. And they're both here today. So we've got a couple of awards to give out. For the Idea Challenge winner, Jenny Anspa from Central Methodist University. And for the Code Challenge winner, Daniel Larkins from CSUCI. If you guys could both come up here really quickly. Jenny, thank you. Here is your award for the best idea thank you. gadget <laughs> challenge. Thank you. And Daniel, there you go. Here's your thank award you. as well. Thank, thank you. you. Terrific job, guys. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right, but we're not stopping there, are we? Because we are kicking off a new gadget challenge. Gadgets have opened up a new, exciting world of possibilities for all OU campus users. They provide an easy way to add customized features and brand new functionality by anyone who uses OU campus. 
Throughout the year, OmniUpdate developers release new gadgets that benefit all of our customers. You too can build and deploy gadgets that add functionality for your specific needs. It's time for you to unlock the potential of OU Campus with gadgets of your own. To help you get started, we are excited to announce the 2015 OmniUpdate Gadget Challenge. The Gadget Challenge is your opportunity to contribute your gadget ideas, needs, and wishes with our user community. You can submit a gadget idea, or you can build a functioning gadget of your own. If you win, you'll get to attend the 2016 OmniUpdate User Training Conference for free! Go to the OmniUpdate Gadget Challenge website for more details. The power to add new capabilities is in your hands. The possibilities are endless. We have over 50,000 intelligent, inventive people who use OU Campus every day. We can't wait to see what you come up with. We can't wait to see what you come up with. So, how do you enter? Well, it's now open, so you can enter the Gadget Challenge today. The rules and the timeline and everything else is available here on the website. Simply go there. You can even submit your gadget and your gadget idea directly right here without even talking to us. But do talk to us here at the conference because we want to hear your ideas. We want to know what you're thinking. We want to guide you if we can. We want you to participate in the gadget workshops, and we want to teach you how to make these gadgets that are going to allow you to win this contest and come back for free next year to this conference. So we hope you're as excited about this as we are. Go to omniupdate.com slash gadget hyphen challenge to learn more. Thank you.